sec. Uh, let's go right to the phone right now. Let's bring in Kadri Ismail. You know that name, 10 years in NFL wide receiver, now doing radio commentary, radio analysis for the Baltimore Ravens, Broncos and Ravens, this Sunday at Sports Authority Field. Kadri, welcome back to the show. Gentlemen, I appreciate you having me back on. Kadri, do you believe the Ravens are, are still feeling the sting of what happened here a couple of years ago when Peyton threw for seven touchdowns in the opener, or do they view Peyton, as we do, as a different quarterback these days? Uh, every year has its own challenges, and while, yeah, he did put on the clinic, uh, he and Wes Welker, um, I think, you know, the way the season kind of started off with, Orioles here having a home game and the Ravens having to shift around the opening game. It just was an odd kind of a, a year. And, you know, people want to say Super Bowl hangover or whatever. But, you know, I think for the Ravens, this year, this team, there's so many new faces. They don't necessarily look back on that. And I think for the defense, they do recognize that as much as you want to say, well, you know, Peyton Manning, um, is a, a different quarterback from then to now. There are a lot of similarities in that he's a winner. And in the beginning of the year, with a fresh arm, fresh leg, um, he is definitely a guy that you, you're going to have to be very much uh, on your A game or he's going to slice and dice you yet again. Quadre, I would, I would agree with you. I think if they were going to look back on the game, they'd look back on the playoff game that they won here. <laughs> and that would be their emphasis <laughs> on coming back in here. That I, I have heard... Uh, Coach Harbaugh talked this week about how uh, that they look kind of look back on that that they they're not paying any attention to what happened here before they're they're looking obviously ahead as you should be but is this team better you just talked about the changes and I've looked at it distinct extensively this week is this in your opinion a better team than it was last year or is it not quite as good you know I, I thought last year's team um, they started off. Strong. Uh, the secondary, though, is where I was concerned because of some injuries. And so that's where, you know, this year's team, I thought, you know, they have a little bit better depth. Um, we're hoping that Kyle Arrington can be this year's Corey Graham, who I'm sure Peyton Manning has nightmares thinking about him because of all the way uh, he, you know, was in the right place at the right time, picking off Peyton Manning's passes in the mile high miracle in the Ravens. Yes, did defeat the Broncos, but I think for uh, Jimmy Smith and for Lardarius Webb, you know, it, it, it's going to be a challenge. And I think, uh, you know, it's one of those things where you lose guys, a um, hello de nada. He leaves. He's up in Detroit. Well, now Timmy Jernigan, Brandon Williams, those are two guys that are going to have to replace him. How, how are they going to do? They look good on paper. That's all well and good. How are they going to play when the lights are bright? Um, we, we know some known factors of a Courtney Upshaw, a Terrell Suggs, an Elvis Doomerville. Thank you guys for the fax machine. But that being said, <laughs> outside of that, you know, the unknowns are, you know, some, some concerns with the secondary of their injuries. Don't come in here and be talking about no Mile High miracle. That was a Mile High mess. So you could call it that in Baltimore, but here we refer to it as the worst thing to happen since a, uh, a general took his troops into Indian territory a long time ago. So <laughs> <laughs> It was a classic game. It was an amazing game. Uh, but it was one of those games where, again, you know, you have to be so disciplined and just know that you know, you've got to, the, the cliche of you've got to do your job, well, the job was done by the Ravens, and, and they were able to finish the deal. I just thought it was an amazing game. That was one of the few times I'm in the broadcast booth, and, you know, every stadium has its kind of own personality. Well, I thought the Broncos fans are one of the most uh, educated fan bases uh, in all of football, and whatever the reason, like, you know, we're doing our broadcast, and when a great play would happen, you could hear, I guess, us in the broadcast booth, you know, speaking about it, and so fans started heckling us when uh, the, the the Broncos got up, and I, I'm like, look, and all of a sudden, I kind of get caught up in the madness, and now I'm giving it back a little bit, which I normally don't do, and sure enough, as 
you know, um, I guess Joe was was about to be sacked. He stepped up in the pocket, throws it out to Jacoby, and I just lose my mind. Uh, it was amazing. It was awesome. And yes, doggone it. It is the Maha Miracle. <laughs> Love it. Live it. We should print it up and make T-shirts and pass them out to everybody in Denver. Kadri Ismail is our guest, and whenever we have a guest on the show, it's brought to you by Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Kadri, I, I, I'm of the th- I subscribe to the theory that uh, both Harbaugh brothers are crazy. Uh, do you subscribe to that? But more importantly, I also believe that John is a better coach than Jim. Um, do you agree with that? And what does make John such a good NFL coach? Well, I, I think John has a better support system than Jim did at the 49ers. When you hear John talk, you also hear him referring to Jim an awful lot as far as um, you know how he structures things. His practices are definitely unique. Um, a lot of the coaches that are around in the NFL, they kind of structure their practices after the great Bill Walsh. And so as different coaching trees start to spread out and, and different seeds of planet from the different coaches, you can kind of see a, a, a similar plan of attack and throughout the week. And so I think for Jim, John was like, well, wait a minute, Jim, why are you doing this? Well, this is how you're supposed to do it. And, you know, he kind of, gives you an answer you're like well I don't get it but it was last year when uh, John and Jim both had joint practices the 49ers came out to the Ravens and it started to make sense even more so for John why he kind of trusted the madman of his brother and so I think you know the support system here with Ozzy with uh, the way you know Eric Acosta their front office is run the scouting department and you know basically Steve Rashadi gives him you know, free reign to have as successful of a team as you can. And one of the things that Rashadi talked about was build relationships with your players. You know, I want to make sure that they know they can come in here and play their best, but you're not just using them as a commodity. Yeah, it is a business, but build that relationship with your players. And I think that's what uh, makes John such a successful coach. I've, I've, again, I've been reading a lot of stuff about the Ravens this week, and there were uh, concerns, it seemed to me, in a couple of areas. And I'd rather ask you that what do you think is the biggest weakness going into the season that we'll discover whether it's really a weakness on Sunday? So you're asking what is the weakness that the Ravens have going into the game? Yes, and, and whether or not you think it – whether the weakness will come true or whether they'll be able to overcome the weaknesses because I have a couple of theories about what their weaknesses are, but you obviously are a lot closer to the situation than I am. What do you think the biggest weaknesses are? Gotcha, but, gotcha, gotcha. I, I think um, one of the weaknesses is that there's an unknown with the, the uh, receiving core because Rashad Perriman, the number one pick, who is, who is you know drafted to take the place of Torrey Smith, who is uh, basic, an explosive down the field threat, and he's supposed to be better than, a little bit more athletic than Tory, but he's been out. So you have an unknown and some young guys at the wide receiver position, although they are explosive and they had strong camp, but the regular season, you know, it kind of either makes or breaks you. I think at the same time, Dennis Pitta, his injury um, has kind of put him out. Um, he's on the pup list. But you have Owen Daniels now over there on the other sideline. And basically you got a bunch of young guys and Crockett Gilmore, who is in his second year, but not a lot of experience. You have Max Williams, who is good, but he's a rookie. And Nick Boyle, who's good, but he's a rookie too. So I think weaknesses at the skill position, because of just youth, you just don't know is where it's, it's at there. I talked about the secondary as far as the defense is concerned. But, yes, Tim Jernigan, uh, his knee injury, uh, that's a question mark because, you know, you, you definitely know that Gary Kubiak is going to want to run the football. Um, I, I'm kind of curious as to see the power struggle that's going to be Gary Kubiak's offense versus Peyton Manning. I've done this offense my entire career. Now I'm saying you want to switch it up on me. 
oh, hell to the no, I'm going to go ahead and call an audible. I'm, I'm curious to see how all that will work out when that happens, when he goes to the sideline. But uh, those are the weaknesses of the Ravens. Kadri, one of the, one of the strengths of the Ravens is the linebacker core. You've got Terrell Suggs and Elvis Dumerville, two really good pass rushers. Correct me if I'm wrong here. I would imagine that uh, your defensive coordinator is going to have those two guys put a lot of pressure on what is in part an inexperienced Broncos offensive line. Two guys that haven't played an NFL snap in Sembrello and Paradise at at, uh, at left tackle and at center. Yes. Absolutely, and that's where, again, you know, you're going to miss a Haloti Nada, though, too, because um, he, he, would, he would literally feast upon a, a young interior offensive lineman, or you've got to put help on him. And by putting help, now that frees up Terrell, or that would free up uh, just an overloaded other side of the line. That's where Elvis comes off the corner. So I think there is a, a bit of a cat and mouse of, do I get rid of the football quickly? And... When I do get rid of the football quickly, you know, that's one of the things that Peyton Manning has been able to, to really, you know, live off of is the run after catch by his receivers in the skill position, guys. Uh, Julius Thomas is not there. Owen Daniels is uh, a heck of a, a tight end. But um, I'm curious as to, you know, the, the, the violent game of chess that's going to be happening between Dean, he's the defense coordinator, and Gary Kubiak as far as how they – try to, yeah, get pressure on Peyton, but what happens when he gets rid of the football, what then? Final question. Uh, how do the Ravens win this game? We know the last time they won here, they won it by throwing a bomb. How are they going to win it? I know you think they're going to win, so how do they win it? Well, I, I think part of what they did was not just the bomb, but they uh, protected Joe, and he got the ball out very accurately on key third down situations, whether it's been Dennis Pitta or Anquan Bolden, um, Ray Rice got in the mix. So all three of those players, none of them are here. Somebody is going to have to step up outside of Steve Smith Sr. on the offense for them to win. The offensive line is a veteran offensive line, so I think Justin Forsett in the running game is going to be tremendous. But big play-wise, someone other than Steve Smith Sr. is going to have to step up and make some key plays in order for this Ravens ball club to win. And also take note as far as the return game because it, it, it seems as though Michael Campanero might be the returner. Um, and if that is the case, then he's going to have to really, really uh, put the Ravens in good field position because, you know, defensively, um, you know, you're, you're talking about opening day and you're talking about fresh legs. You're talking about a, a crowd with the vocal cords that are ready to go. And, you know, damn it to hell, I don't want to hear – uh, you know, incomplete by the entire crowd. <laughs> because that just annoys the heck out of me. <laughs> as well as us, believe it or not. Kadri, always love having you on the show, and we'll see you uh, in the press box on Sunday, all right? Absolutely looking forward to it, fellas. All right, Kadri Ismail, he calls the color on the, uh, on the Ravens football games. And as always, our live guests are brought to you by Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's.